So in August, late August, there's a festival called Burning Man. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it by now. And it's held in the northwest corner of Nevada. It's the third flattest place on the planet. There is virtually no microbe life there. So art really sticks out because it is so flat and it's just brown that you can have really funny things there like there's a, a washer in one spot and there's a dryer 30 feet away with socks coming out. So it's just really weird stuff that happens. So this is a more serious part. Uh, this is 2007. They had an exhibit there that they were going to do and it was called Crude Awakening. And what it was was a 100 foot oil derrick that they built and they were going to have three LP injectors that would come to the middle of the uh, derrick and it would create this huge fireball. Okay, so this is 2007, keep that in mind when it was. Uh, anyway, so what happened was, on Friday night they were going to blow this thing up and there was this big dust storm. So they didn't do it because when you have a dust storm there you don't do anything, you can't, you don't have to hunker down. So Saturday morning my wife and I decided we would ride our bikes out and see how it was going. Well, when you get your ticket for Burning Man, it says on the back, they're responsible for your life. So if anything happens, they're not responsible. So you have to use a little common sense when you're there. So when we were there, the safety people were looking at this thing, and they had a 500-foot perimeter, which meant 500 foot from the center, people could be that close or no closer. When the safety people came out Saturday and took one look at this thing, they said, now it's 1,000 feet. So we weren't going to get near it anyways, but we were really glad we went there and heard that. So we used a little common sense. So Saturday night comes along, the man burns on Saturday night, it's about one o'clock in the morning, we're asleep, and an air raid siren goes off. And if you're a child of the 60s, you know what that means, or the late 50s. And it's a real one, and it just echoes through the whole area. Okay, it scares the hell out of you, wake you up. So we were about a mile away from where this thing was gonna blow up, set the camera up, and they start off with playing the Star Spangled Banner, and you can hear it, because in the desert like that, when there's nothing in the way, somebody can whisper for 20 feet, and you can hear what they're saying. So they're playing the Star Spangled Banner, and they're shooting all these fireworks, just normal fireworks in the air, and it sounds really cool, and then all of a sudden it stops. Then they start playing the Star Spangled Banner off key, and they're doing fireworks again, only this time they're not fireworks. You look at it for a second, think they're fireworks, and you realize they're tracer rounds. It's like anti-aircraft, and they're playing the Star Spangled Banner off key. Then all of a sudden, it stops, and for about three or four seconds, nothing. And then the entire sky lights up with this giant fireball, and for three seconds, you can see people hundreds of yards away, just like it was noon. And it totally scares the hell out of you. You can't believe that they made something this big. And they warn people to be, if you're gonna be up front, you're gonna lose facial hair. <laughs> so, when we saw some friends got back, we were at our campsite, we didn't dare get near it because we knew it might be bad. We had a particular friend that was on the front line. Yes, he lost his mustache and eyebrows, and all his film shifted to green. So all his pictures had this green tint in them from either the heat or whatever it was, just made all this film do that. And you can see these videos on YouTube. You look at Crude Awakening and look at it, but we actually got the best footage because we were so far away, we got the full impact of what it did to the entire man, lighting the entire sky up. So that's it.